What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here with a full review of the LG G2. LG is aiming for this guy to compete with the big boys, the Samsung Galaxy S4, the HTC One, and the top echelon of the smartphone world. I put it through its paces, let's see how it stacks up. So as I do with all my smartphone reviews, I wanna give you a disclaimer. I use this phone for five days and then on and off for two more. So before I get into all the specs and what it can do or not do, let's first talk about call quality. And it was overall pretty awesome. I tested it with AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon. Obviously, wherever you are, it might vary, but it was really, really solid. Uh, I'm using the AT&T version for this review. I didn't really have any drop calls at all. I did test all three of the carriers. Call quality was really, really crystal clear. And on all three carriers, the folks on the other end of the phone couldn't even tell I was using a smartphone. Speakerphone was also very loud as well, so if you're one of the few like me that rely on speakerphone, you're gonna have no issue at all. So let's jump right in and talk about hardware. This thing is an absolute beast. The Snapdragon 800 flies. The UI is a little bit heavy, but we'll get to that later, but everything on this phone felt amazingly fast. I would even say it's probably the fastest experience I can remember. What does that mean, fast? Yeah, apps load fast, games load quickly, but just using the phone, you never feel any sort of lag at all, whether you're flicking from screen to screen or opening up a menu, things just feel really quick. It's hard to sort of quantify, but you feel like you're using something of extreme power. Uh, the combo of Snapdragon 800 and two gigs of RAM really are the perfect marriage. So the Quadrant score I know you guys want to know is a pretty impressive score of 20,851. Damn. Next, let's talk about the screen. Honestly, I feel like I can make a whole romantic video about how amazing the screen is, just slowly swirling around, looking at it wistfully, brushing back its hair. This screen is absolutely incredible, and anything I show you on video is not gonna do it justice. You have to see it to believe it. It's a 5.2 inch screen with a 1920 by 1080 resolution, but those numbers don't do it justice. It really is just incredible. Indoors. Outdoors, though, it can be a bit of a different story. If you have to put the brightness all the way up, and then it's pretty readable. Uh, but if you have it on audio, you might have a hard time seeing it uh, outside. And the cool thing is LG did it with almost no side bezel, so you really feel like it's just all screen, uh, which is pretty cool. Obviously, the usual stuff looks great on it. Games, text, pictures, and video uh, look absolutely incredible. When it comes to screen, LG knocked this so far out of the park that it went into the next ballpark and was a home run there as well. I really give them credit. We've seen an evolution of LG screens over the past few years, and they've really gotten better and better to culminate into what I would probably say is the best smartphone screen on the market. And I'm saying that in the world of retina displays, pretty awesome Samsung displays, on uh, HTC's pretty ballish screen on the HTC One. You have to see the screen to really appreciate how good it looks. All right, so next let's jump into battery life. So I went in thinking, all right, you got a combo of a high power processor and HD screens, probably not gonna have the best battery. And if you thought that like me, you'd surprisingly be dead wrong. The 3000 milliamp hour battery lasted two days with decent usage. And I do not baby my phones. In fact, I turn the brightness up 85%. I turn auto totally off, connect it to Wi-Fi pretty much all of the day, take it off the charger around 7.30, about two hours of phone calls. I got two emails being checked every five minutes. I'm watching videos, I'm playing games, there's social networking going on. I'm really not taking it easy on the phone at all. By the end of day one, when I plugged it back in or would have plugged it back in um, around 11 p.m., I had 60% of my battery left which is 20 to 10% better than what I've gotten on pretty much every other phone I've tested. Really, really incredible and equally surprising. All right, so let's get this one out of the way, the buttons. They're on the back and it's straight up weird and it took me about four days to get used to it, which I definitely did. But it boils down to this for me. The buttons on the back don't really do anything. Uh, people won't buy this phone because of buttons on the back, but they might not buy it because of the buttons on the back. And I can understand why LG did it. You got no screen bezel, maybe not room on the sides. Uh, but I didn't really find that it added much to it. Uh, but fortunately, LG did include some software to make it so you really have to fiddle with the buttons or at least try and find them anyway with your finger. Which, if you notice, was a pretty awesome segue to talk about software. Uh, it's pretty heavy on here, but it never slowed down the phone at all. As I mentioned at the beginning of this review, it was crazy fast. So I mentioned you don't have to ever really touch this home button. LG's got some pretty awesome things on here. You can double tap the screen to lock or unlock it. Uh, it's pretty brilliant actually. Just simple double tap will light up the screen for you and you can go ahead and start using it if you want to lock it again. Simple double tap on the screen will send it back to slumber, which is really kind of cool. 
Uh, so LG's got a couple other cool tweaks in here that we've seen on other LG phones. Uh, they got something called QSlide, which lets you run sort of two apps, uh, background and an app on your home screen. Uh, there aren't that many here to choose from, but there are some decent amount, things like email, calendar, messaging, phone, and videos, and you can run them just on top of your screen. You can make them full screen, you can check your calendar, um, kind of other things, make a quick phone call. Uh, really a very neat thing to do. I also love the way you can remove apps. If you go into settings and you go to your app screen, in the upper right hand corner there's a plus or minus. If you select that, just like iOS, you get a little red X and you click it and you can delete apps. It was really, really very simple. Uh, the UI is very clearly laid out, even if a little bit cartoonish. Let's move on to camera. The 30 megapixel camera takes pretty nice shots. It's got bright colors and average and low light. For me though, camera doesn't mean all that much to me. Suffice to say, images are just as good or better than your average smartphone. If you're a huge camera file, uh, we'll have a gallery on the full written review link down below to see what those pictures look like. Uh, but they look good. They don't look like you're gonna replace a DSLR with them, but they look pretty decent. All right, next let's talk about extras because this one's got some other bits and pieces in it. So first, only Verizon has wireless charging, which I found really annoying. I've been loving wireless charging on my Google Edition Galaxy S4, and I found it really hard to live without having it. I know it's kind of silly, but I just got very used to just putting it on my desk and let it charge, or at night just put it down on its little charging pad and let it charge. So if you want to use the AT&T or T-Mobile versions, you are going to be totally out of luck. Uh, build quality felt okay, but for a non-removable back, I'd expect much more of a premium feel. They can do a lot more, but you don't have to be able to pull that plastic back off. Uh, it feels nice, it just didn't feel great. So the conclusion here, LG didn't just bring a phone to compete with the heavyweights, they came to win. This phone gets a really, really, really solid 9. If they moved the buttons, gave all carriers wireless charging, made the UI a little less silly and animation heavy, we'd probably be looking at a perfect 10. This is an incredible phone, probably one of the best phones I have ever reviewed, let alone reviewed this year. Uh, I used to overlook LG when it came to phones, I thought they were really subpar. This changes the game. LG has a home run on their hands. If you're looking for a premium smartphone, whether Android or iOS, you owe it to yourself to look at the LG G2. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think. Please give the video a thumbs up. We'll definitely appreciate it. If you want to read the full written review or see the gallery or see any other images we've got about the phone, uh, hit the link down below to go to the full written review. I'm John Regis from Techno Buffalo. I'll see you next video. What's up, everyone? It's Ashley. Thanks so much for watching that most recent video. If you enjoyed it, please click on the word subscribe right underneath me to get tons of more tech videos from us here at Techno Buffalo. We have got unboxings, comparisons, reviews, recaps, and everything else you can think of here on the channel. Now, if you're in the mood for more technology, just click right over here to check out some of our most recent videos. See you next time, humans.